Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Voltron book review. This one is going to be for uh, the Voltron Legendary Defender, the Voltron Coalition Handbook, official guidebook of Voltron Legendary Defender. So this is the second uh, guidebook or data book for Voltron. Uh, the release date for this I believe is the 28th of August. Uh, I happened to get mine a little bit earlier. It arrived a couple of days before that, so that's cool. Uh, that's why I'm putting a video out about it. Uh, this is the second second data book obviously following the first one which is this one the paladins handbook this one here covered the first two seasons with some hints about season three uh, and then this one covers up to and including season six uh, but you can sort of tell i think that they were maybe unsure exactly when it would be released so like at times they're a little kind of like vague about season six and that there's not a lot of visuals from season six even though they talk about it a lot um but for the most part, the timing on this one is much better than uh, this book, even though it's still, you know, like a season behind in that we've already had season seven. Realistically, you know, it would have been perfectly timed if it had come out in between season six and seven. But anyway, uh, here it is. Uh, for those of you who, who just want a review, is it a good book? Should you go and buy it and you just want a, is it good or not? I would definitely say that this is a big improvement over the first book. I think there's so much more like interesting information. Um, I think they really doubled down on what made the Paladin's Handbook interesting, which was the comments from the characters and stuff. Uh, and they were a little bit light across the first book. They were only in certain places. They have that a lot more throughout this book. It feels a lot more like in character. You get a lot more kind of funny moments of the characters interacting in those little comments. Um, and then the data itself, like just the details, it feels like there's so much more. And I think that's because it covers six seasons. Like there's so many more planets, um, minor characters, main characters to cover. There's a lot more details that kind of this book kind of has. And, and because of that, I think that it's, it's definitely worth getting. Because again, it's not an expensive book because they keep the size on these fairly small. They are handbook sized. This isn't even the size of a normal comic. Um, so it's a smallish book, but it's really nicely put together. So if you're a fan of Voltron, um, I think this is worth getting uh, for not too much of a price. So um, I was very happy with it. Um, and I, I liked the, the Paladin's Handbook. It was just, uh, it definitely was a little light on, on like new content. This one, again, you know, you wouldn't say it has like a ton of brand new information. But it's very interesting. I had a lot of fun reading through this just before this video. So that out of the way, let's get into actually talking about some details of this book. So first of all, the cover, you know, it's nice and shiny here. You can see it's all kind of gold for the writing. On the back, it just has, you know, an advert for, you know, the Paladin's Handbook. And then I think the other books that the same publisher pu puts out are, may are more kid focused. They're just kind of recap of episodes, group of episodes. So there's not much to them. The main, I suppose, format difference with this book is that there's probably about 10 more pages than there is in the Paladin's Handbook. And then they do something a little bit different in that the first, about 100 pages of this book are normal. But then you get towards, right at the end, you flip from page 99 to next and suddenly it's Lotor, but it's upside down. Then you realize you have to flip the book upside down and you kind of read backwards and it's a little section on Lotor right at the back, just a few pages but um, a nice little thing to get his perspective because he was a pretty big focus in the seasons that the Paladin's Handbook didn't cover. So anyway, let's get into this uh, credits page, uh, Kala Spinner. I'm pretty sure I saw on like Amazon and stuff like this that this was Carla Spinner, but I'm assuming that this book is edited correctly and that is the case, so Kala or Kala Spinner. Um, we have Joaquin Dos Santos' signature here, as well as Lauren Montgomery, who are, of course, the kind of main producers, the main members of the creative team uh, for this iteration of Voltron. So, you know, it's all official new information. And immediately you get the idea that, OK, we're, we're dealing with season six stuff here in memory of the Castle of Lions. And they reference this a lot. Fun stuff immediately, on the even on the contents page, you see it's crossed out there. And Hunk says that this is what it actually is. Um, Allura doesn't know what X's and O's is, um, and you can see here, Lance has lost the Keith here, Lance has lost the Pidge here, and then Hunk has lost the Pidge uh, down here. Just a fun little thing even on the contents page. Uh, you know, Quran is the one to kind of guide you through this book, so most of it is basically like 
his writing, the details from his perspective, and then you'll see the other characters kind of come in with some comments like this as you go through. So Lance saying it's Razzle Dazzle time, Paige saying and sometimes doodles, and then you can see here's all the characters writing. So Allura has the fancy stuff. If you've read the Paladin's Handbook, you know exactly the format of this. Uh, Shiro doesn't get to comment in this book because obviously he's sort of unconscious because it's meant to be like immediately after season six. Um, but uh, yeah, we immediately get into the stuff with the timeline, which is mainly going back 10,000 years ago to the origin of all of this incident with the you know, destruction of Dibazol and then Altea with the previous paladins, Zarkon, Alfor, Trigal, Blates, and uh, Grigal, which is pretty cool. I was, I was disappointed that uh, because of the timing of the Paladin's Handbook, it didn't cover this backstory stuff. Because um, it, it, it felt like that book was almost immediately out of date. This one feels a little bit more kind of like, yeah, this is current enough information. And then we get basically a recap of stuff up to now. Two Decaphibes ago, that basically means two years. And then one Decaphibe ago. This is an interesting one, and in that that means one year ago from the end of season six. So that means a year, at least a year has passed in the series. And then I think the stuff with Sam from the most recent season, season seven, means like roughly another year has passed or close to it. Because like he left for Earth at the end of season four, I think. He arrived in, obviously, as we saw in season seven. So like for him, a year has passed. So it's it's probably a little bit more than this it's probably like a year and a half for our characters at this point but it's interesting you know that they, they mention that stuff um and again some doodles here from page and lands making a comment karan gets the first i suppose kind of character intro stuff um and again you see some of the comments here karan was my father's most trusted aide and i'm honored that he's mine as well <clears throat> really funny one from page here he calls me number five but i know i'm number one in his heart and then keith also gets a comment there uh, and then, yeah, they have these kind of nice profiles for them. Uh, full name, home planet, monsters and mana persona, which is, again, you know, referencing season six. What I miss most about home, what, what, when I was little, I wanted to, and what makes me, mo what makes me happy. So with, with Koran, of course, it's all kind of crazy. You know, he's using all the kind of uh, old Altaian kind of jargon and stuff like that. And, but it's, it's pretty fun, you know, that you definitely get a lot of Koran in this book. Meet the Paladins, again, it's mainly just an info page. And then we, get, we do get a page on Shiro, even though he doesn't get to comment himself. It's like Karan's bio of Shiro with uh, comments from the other characters. This, I think, these sections here are the best in the book. For each of the Paladins, and you get, like, the other Paladins talking about that character, it's definitely the best back and forth stuff, so I'll go through this a bit. And, um, you know, Keith saying Shiro was our original leader. He's my, he, he's my best friend and like a brother to me. Uh, Paige says he's like a legend. Um, Lance's one is pretty nice. You know, if it weren't for Shiro, Voltron wouldn't be possible. He has made me a better person. Uh, he's made all of us a better, better people. Uh, Allura, this is a nice one from Allura. Shiro was one of the best paladins that Voltron has ever had. I know his leadership would have made my father proud. And then Hunk, of course, you know, with the all caps, kind of like you can tell how intense he is. It's, it's, they really have Hunk's voice down, even in writing. Uh, Shiro always makes sure that everyone around him feels comfortable, except for Zarkon. You didn't want to make Zarkon comfortable. I mean, I don't think anyone wants to make Zarkon comfortable. Zarkon was the worst, so. Very, very fun. Um, and then obviously in the, in the end of his bio here, which is mainly just going through the facts of everything he's been through, they do mention here that... Uh, Allura was able to transfer Shiro's essence back into a clone body. Shiro is back. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, and then, yeah, that's, so this is where they mention all the clone stuff uh, as well. Um, and his monsters and mana persona. Takashi Shirogane, the paladin. And his twin, Jiro Shirogane, the paladin. So, you know, a lot of references here. Here's Lance's page. And again, you know, you have him writing his own one. So there's his monsters and mana persona. What I miss most about home... Uh, hanging out with my niece and nephew and eating garlic knots. Uh, he wanted to be a fi fighter pilot. He makes He's happy being part of the team. And uh, Hunk comments as well. What he's not afraid to admit, uh, you know, he, he misses his family, which of course we know we saw that take place this season. Uh, and then Allura says here, Lance was the first person I saw when I woke up from my 10,000 decaphibes sleep. His ears are hideous. And he's like, but you've grown to love them, right? Shiro... Uh, Keith, sorry, uh, once Lance and I had a bonding moment, and Hunk says Lance is his best friend. Uh, 
page also has a comment over here. But uh, yeah, re pretty nice stuff um, as they go through it. It really, it really gets the journey of the characters across from their kind of basic personas and like the early episodes to what they've kind of grown into. And Lance kind of demonstrates that a lot. Here's Allura's bio. Um, and you know, it, it's all, you know, you know <laughs> she says she actually does like drinking milkshakes. That's pretty funny. Um, and here's Lance's comment about Allura. Is an, ins is an inspiration to us all, plus she says my, my name like a rich person. So <clears throat> the accent is something that Lance likes. Um, and then Keith says here, Allura is wonderful, but don't get on her bad side or you'll get a lecture. Trust me. And then Hunk is all about the food here. But yeah, it, 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 it's really, really good stuff, I think. Uh, I'm not going through all of the details here, but it's all, like, accurate. It's, it, as I said, it gets across the journey of the characters here. But the, the comments, I think, are the best, like, written stuff because it's very, very in character for everyone. And then, this is an interesting one for Keith. Uh, what I miss most about home, honestly, not much. I don't think uh, I was meant to stay on Earth. I guess that I guess that's because I'm part Galra. That's a pretty interesting one. And... Um, and Keith says he's afraid of losing people. Uh, it makes it makes it hard to get close to anyone. Um, Lance says, at first I really hated Keith's mullet, but it's starting to grow on me. If I couldn't be the one to pilot the black line, I'm glad it's him. Um, Katie, of course, says um, he helped me. To, he helped to me to realize that without me, there's no Voltron. He's become a good leader. Um, and just some nice little details throughout. Here's Pidge. And we see that, uh, I don't know if we knew that before, that her dog is named Bebe, which we, we did see this uh, current season. And um, she mentioned that she wanted to be just like her brother when she was growing up. And um, Hunk says, you know, Pidge and I have grown very close. Um, oh yeah, Lance down here says, Pidge and I first met at the garrison. We've come a long way together. Um, but yeah, you know, don't want to focus on every single thing that's said here, but... Uh, Hunk's all caps writing, of course. Humorous Hunk. Um, and he says, I fear loneliness above all else, uh, which is interesting. And then uh, like, Allura says something pretty nice about Hunk here. What is, impresses me most about Hunk is his desire to learn more. And this is referencing the fact that he took the, the, the lessons in Galra and stuff like that. Uh, Lance mentions Shay here. The dream team, the Balmeran alien Shay thinks so, at least. Um, so that's cool. And then Keith, in reference, I suppose, to the Keith Hunk scene from season seven, kind of almost setting it up. Hunk is an important part of the team. He might say he's a leg, but he's so much more. So that's pretty cool. Whole bit on Colton Eckert. And mainly just the jokes here um, about Karan and Allura both kind of being weirded out by it, even though the, the, all the humans are perfectly acceptable of what it is, but they're very concerned about the way that the milk is made and where it comes out. Space mice. I think we got these named in the first, the Paladin's Handbook. This this specifies which is which, though, which I quite like. You know, Plat, uh, Chulat, uh, Platchu, and Chuchul. Um, and, yeah, oh yeah, a little bit here. Underlined, Lance is in love with her, and then Lance is like, oh, what? Uh, we're writing this down so uh he's just uh, i suppose for him like the fact that like oh that note of like how he feels about it laura is written in a book somewhere here's the blades of marmora section and um, with the different members keith Calivan. that's interesting ilun and vrek i don't think we got those named before and then fallen blades ulaz face and talk regris here's here's a page of kralia um, and he just says down here, uh, you know, if Crowley had had it her way, she would have stayed on Earth and raised Keith. And he says, my life would have been very different. So that's interesting. Here's the Rebels, uh, Slav, not much there. Ozar, Teosh, that's obviously what they found. Matt, Rolo, Naima, and Beezer. This is where it's just kind of recapping a lot of those kind of uh, season four stuff. Here's Matt. So he, he actually gets to write his. You get to see kind of his writing here, which I quite like. Uh, and again, it's like referencing Paige a lot. You know, what makes me happy? Seeing my little sister out in the world doing what she's meant to do. Uh, and he's not afraid to admit that he never thought he'd see his family again, but he also never lost hope. Um, and then Paige gets a couple of little comments there. Not that much. 
here's Sam Holt, you know, you get to see him writing his stuff, which is pretty nice, again, about his family. Um, just here, uh, Matt and Katie have blossomed into their own people. I told Katie long ago that she'd have an adventure that the whole universe would take notice of, and I was right. And he mentions, I think Colleen is going to yell at me for not taking the kids back to Earth with me, which we didn't quite get that, but yeah, he explained it almost immediately to, to her, and I think she understood. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll move on. Commander Bo, so this is obviously the guy from season six. This is like the one of the first season six episodes. Uh, here's the universe and the paladins kind of talking about the different things. Allura, of course, mentions the fact that Altea is no longer on the map. Uh, Paige mentions Alcarian, uh, the mermaid planet for Lance, and Hunk just wants a natural planet. Here's Alcarian and Reiner and stuff like that. Um, different places like Puig, Puig, Refod, and it's just this is just nice because. Um, it helps to remember the names of these places instead of being like, oh, the Voltron show place. It's like, oh, it's, it's the planet Refod. And uh, Noxzella, Kreda's moon. And you get little comments here and there about things. Um, uh, Marchanda. And again, Keith actually has a comment here about honoring the, the lives that were lost of the, the, the coalition prior to this, the rebellion. Space Hospital reference to the alternate reality stuff. I do wonder will we see that again? The return of Slav and so on. Here's Oriande. And we start to get into, I suppose, some of the, the little things of like Allura and Lotor from them season five and six. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just uh, n nothing overly new here. Just, you know, um, Explaining what happened and stuff like that. It, 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 it is a recap for the most part this book, but it is the little details that work uh, Reading out all of the text and stuff like that uh, Bebo Tregok uh, Kaipadon wish there was a kind of pronunciation guide as well in this some of these are kind of hard to get on To to, to say properly, but uh, Galar cloning facility. I was wondering if there'd be any extra information here because it is a plot point that was just kind of left that like, oh yeah, she used one of the clones, but she has all these other clones and they didn't do anything. Okay, but they do mention here Operation Corone and you know Corone means clone in Japanese. And then um, uh, where do they specifically mention it? It's somewhere on this. Yeah, Hagar uh, had been able to clone Shiro from the arm she took from him after he was kidnapped in Kerberos. So it's just interesting that they specify that, that he was literally cloned from the arm that was taken. It wasn't that they just like took his blood and did something like that. It's no, the arm that they had and, and kept apparently is what they cloned from. Uh, here's the Altain colony, of course, which I assume is going to be, I don't know if the, the place necessarily is going to be that important in the final season, season eight. I assume we will go back there or like it'll be involved in where uh, the Altains finally settle down again, but the the people from here are going to be, I think, referenced again. So that's interesting. Uh, Unalu, the Galra Empire. Here's some stuff about Zarkon. I'll just you know, comment here. My father always did right by Zarkon. Here's Lotor, or so he said, by Keith. Um, I know, yeah, it, this is a nice little bit up here. Uh, for a time, Allura and Lotor were romantically linked. Uh, Paige says uh, they kissed, so she knows about that. And then, uh, we all make bad decisions sometimes, and then Lance says, clearly. So, it's interesting. Uh, Hagar on Nerva. And interestingly here, I think, probably set up for season 8 as well. Onerva and Hagar are two different people. Hagar is a twisted version of what she won what was once so beautiful and pure. Um, Narti and Kova. And again, they, they reference Kova a lot here because it is obviously the, the same cat that uh, Onerva had and, and so on. But uh, yeah, Aksha. Uh, again, you know, it, it, I think this makes it really clear that like, if not for season seven, like we just don't know. There's so much we don't know about Aksha. They do confirm it here, um, Lotor's half Galra general. So we don't actually know what specifically is her other kind of uh, species because Otherwise, she looks fairly normal as a Galra. She certainly stands out as being almost more human-like. But um, compared to, like, Ezor and Zethrid, who are also, you know, half Galra, they clearly seem like they're a mix between Galra and some other alien species, whereas it doesn't seem as much with Oxia. Dayak and the Repetsaw lesson. 
just you know something like if you forget what it actually means it tells you here that it means killing thrust and explains it a whole you know tribes on planet, planet Dibazol stuff um, getting towards the end of this section here at least you know they, they mention this is I suppose in canon you know like the idea of how places contact you know the Voltron coalition to ask for help and so on um, uh, <clears throat> interestingly here Paige mentions the blue line can get from Earth to Kerberos in five minutes and Voltron can go even faster uh, and after season seven I assume even faster than that with the, the whole booster rocket thing Tour of the Castle of Lines, and once again they confirm it. It's after season six, after yeah, after season six because they mentioned that it's uh, it's no <clears throat> it's no longer uh, there anymore, and they can only give a virtual tour of it. And again, they, <clears throat> there's not too much here. Um, they just go over the different places, the bridge, the training deck. That's where uh, Allura mentions the idea that Lance has really mastered his Bayard, including the whole Altaian broadsword moment. Um, and just Lance has his name circled and says, that's right. Here's the holding cell with Lotor, and she mentions it was, an it was a hard lesson to learn, but an important one. Um, sleeping quarters, library, swimming pool. Just referencing all the different details here, nothing kind of too crazy. Lounge, hangers. They go through the lines again. There's nothing too imp importful, important, impactful here. Um, I almost wish they would have listed um, a section on Voltron where they went through what all the different Bayards do and like the different combinations. Like this is what these two Bayards together activates and so on. They don't really do that. Um, they mainly the, the the main details are referring to different the switches in lines. So the red line, Keith mentions how. You know, <clears throat> he was surprised with how fast Red responded to Lance, uh, and then Lance says, uh, Oh, thanks, Keith. Uh, that might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Um, green line, they don't cover much because obviously Paige has been in it the whole time. Uh, in the text here, they do mention that, you know, Allura adapted to, to Blue after Lance, you know, kind of went over to Red. And then Allura actually says, I'm a lag there, which is cool. But I think she said that when, when she first did it as well, so that's nice. And then, interestingly here, um, they mentioned that uh, pilots of the Yellow Line could go on to become high-ranking and successful diplomats. Uh, and then Alora says, uh, we have full confidence that Hunk will be an outstanding diplomat in no time. So, that that's interesting. And he more or less plays that role in, like, Season 7 with the team, especially in the Episode 6 of Season 7. He kind of plays that mediator role. And then in the low tour section, it's um, it seems to be set just like before the final battle because at the very end here he mentions that um, you know the three syncline ships and the syncline beast um, that he will I think oh yeah here last page um, you know together will end Voltron and bring about peace in the universe so this is before he gets lost in the quintessence. Uh, I suppose the fact that he wrote this, I suppose, prior to the big incident happening shows that, like, those were his true intents. And maybe it, it makes you lean towards that they won't attempt to redeem him in Season 8 or anything like that. That he is meant to be still viewed as a villain and that path is perhaps not one they'll take. Especially with some of the stuff that Allura said. Um, not really... It not really feeling like there's any feelings left there for Lotor anymore. That it was an important lesson she learned with that, and she's kind of past it now. But yeah, that's the my early review, kind of showing off the Voltron Coalition book. Um, you know, going through it again. You know, it it I think it's probably one of the more notable Voltron books we've had so far. As I said, it's an improvement over the Paladin's Handbook. Um, and in that case, I would recommend it, uh, if not just to have something that is basically a data book. There's a bit more to this than just recaps, but I think even within the recaps, it's actually quite well done because it, there's a reason that the stuff is recapped here, and they recap it in like a nice way that's kind of like reflecting on the journey rather than... Um, just a kind of flat flat recap so you know I, I i didn't cover everything here there's 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 stuff hidden in all of the text because obviously it's la it's a uh, quran who's writing the actual core text of the book so you know you have a few comments here and there from him as well 
But, you know, that that's the initial thoughts on the book. So, yeah, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. Are you going to be getting this book? What are your thoughts on what is included in this? And um, I do hope we get a third one just to cover season seven and eight and potentially some information post-show and stuff like that that maybe the show can't quite cover. That would seem like a really good way to get some extra information out if they did another one of these. So, you know, keep an eye on that. But uh, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.